What do fish have to do with anything? Every day at three o'clock, Mrs. Markham waited for her son Willie to come out of school. They walked home together. If they asked why she did it, Mrs. Markham would say, "Parents need to watch their children." As they left the schoolyard, Mrs. Markham inevitably asked, "How was school?" Willie would begin to talk. Then stop. He was never sure his mother was listening. She seemed preoccupied with her own thoughts. She had been like that ever since his dad had abandoned them six months ago. No one knew where he'd gone. Willie had the feeling that his mother was lost too. It made him feel lonely. One Monday afternoon. As they approached the apartment building where they lived, she suddenly tugged at him. "Don't look that way," she said. "Where? At that man over there?" Willie stole a look over his shoulder. A man whom Willie had never seen before was sitting on a red plastic meal crate near the curb. His matted, streaky grey hair hung like a ragged curtain over his dirty face. His shoes were torn. Rough hands lay upon his knees. One hand was palm up. No one seemed to pay him any mind. Willie was certain he had never seen a man so utterly alone. It was as if he were some spat-out piece of chewing gum on the pavement. What's the matter with him? Willie asked his mother in a hushed voice. Keeping her eyes straight ahead, Mrs. Markham said, "He's sick." She pulled Willie around. "Don't stare. It's rude." "What kind of sick?" As Mrs. Markham searched for an answer, she began to walk faster. "He is unhappy," she said. "What's he doing?" "Come on, Willie. You know perfectly well he's begging." Do you think anyone gave him anything? I don't know. Now come on, don't look. Why don't you give him anything? We don't have anything to spare. When they got home, Mrs. Markham removed a white cardboard box from the refrigerator. It contained pound cake. Using her thumb as a measure. She carefully cut a half-inch piece of cake and gave it to Willie on a clean plate. The plate lay on a plastic mat decorated with images of roses with diamond-like dewdrops. She also gave him a glass of milk and a folded napkin. She moved slowly. Willie said, "Can I have a baker piece of cake?" Mrs. Markham picked up the cake box and ran a manicured pink fingernail along the nutrition information panel. A half-inch piece is a portion, and a portion contains the following health requirements. Do you want to hear them? No. It's on the box, so you can believe what it said. Scientists, study people, they write these things. If you're smart enough, you could become a scientist like this. Mrs. Markham tapped the box. It pays well. Willie ate his cake and drank the milk. When he was done, he took care to wipe the crumbs off his face, as well as to blot his milled moustache with the napkin. The mother liked him to be neat. His mother said. Now go on and do your homework carefully. You're in sixth grade. It's important. Willie gathered up his books that lay on the empty third chair. At the kitchen entrance, he paused and looked back at his mother. She was staring sadly at the cake box, but he didn't think she was seeing it. Her unhappiness made him think of the man on the street. What kind of unhappiness do you think he has? He suddenly asked. Who's that? That man. Mrs. Markham looked puzzled. 
The bagging man? The one on the street? Oh, could be anything, his mother said vaguely. Well, a person can be unhappy for many reasons. She turned to stare out the window as if an answer might be there. Is unhappiness a sickness you can cure? I wish you wouldn't ask such questions. Why? After a moment, she said, Questions that have no answers shouldn't be asked. Can I go out? Homework first. Willie turned to go again. Money, Mrs. Markham suddenly said. Money will cure a lot of unhappiness. That's why that man was banging. A salesman once said to me, Maybe you can't buy happiness, but you can rent a lot of it. Well, you should remember that. How much money do we have? Not enough. Is that why you are unhappy? Willie, do your homework. Willie started to ask another question, but decided he would not get an answer. He left the kitchen. The apartment had three rooms. The walls were painted mint green. Willie walked down the hallway to his room, which was at the front of the building. By climbing up on the windowsill and pressing against the glass, he could see the sidewalk five stories below. The man was still there. It was almost five when he went to tell his mother he had finished his school assignments. He found her in her dim bedroom sleeping. Since she had begun working the night shift at the convenience store two weeks now, she took naps in the late afternoon. For a while, Willie stood in the threshold, hoping his mother would wake up. When she didn't, he went to the front of the room and looked down on the street again. The bagging man had not moved. Willie returned to his mother's room. I'm going out, he announced softly. Willie waited a decent interval for his mother to wake him, and when she didn't, he made sure his keys were in his pocket, then he left the apartment. By standing just outside the building door, he could keep his eyes on the man it appeared as if he had still not moved. Willie wondered how anyone could go without moving so long in the chill October air. Was staying still part of the man's sickness? During the twenty minutes that Willie watched, no one who passed looked in the beggar's direction. Willie wondered if they even saw the man. Certainly, no one put any money into his open hand. A lady leading a dog by a leash went by. The dog strained in the direction of the man sitting on the crate. His tail wagged. The lady pulled the dog away. Heel, she commanded. The dog, tail between his legs, scampered to the lady's side. And、even so, the dog twisted around to look back at the beggar. Willie grinned. The dog had done exactly what Willie had done when his mother told him not to stare. Pressing deep into his pocket, Willie found a nickel. It was warm and slippery. He wondered how much happiness you could rent for a nickel. Squeezing the nickel between his fingers, Willie walked slowly toward the man. When he came before him, he stopped, suddenly nervous. The man, who appeared to be looking at the ground, did not move his eyes. He smelled bad. Here, Willie stretched forward and dropped the coin into the man's open right hand. God bless you. 
the man said hoarsely as he folded his fingers over the coin. His eyes, like high beams on the car, flashed up at Willy and then dropped. Willy waited for a moment, then went back up to his room. From his window, he looked down on the street. He thought he saw the coin in the man's hands, but was not sure. After supper, Mrs. Markham readied herself to go to work, then kissed Willy good night, as she did every night. She said, "If you have regular problems, call Mrs. Murphy downstairs. What's her number? Two seven four eight six seven six." Willy said. Extra bad problems? Call Grandma. Three six nine six seven five four. Super special problems? You can call me. Nine six two six seven four three. Emergency? The police. Nine one one. Lay out your morning clothing. I will. Don't let anyone in the door. I won't. No television past nine, I know, but you can read late. You're the one who's going to be late, Willie reminded her. I'm leaving, Mrs. Markham said. After she went, Willie stood for a long while in the hallway. The empty apartment felt like a cave that lay deep below the earth. That day in school. Willie's teacher had told the class about a kind of fish that lived in caves. These fish could not see; they had no eyes. The teacher had said it was living in a dark cave that made them like that. Willie had raised his hand and asked, "If they want to get out of the cave, can they?" "I suppose." "Would their eyes come back?" Good question," she said, but did not give an answer. Before he went to bed, Willie took another look out the window. In a pool of light cast by the street lamp, Willie saw the man. On Tuesday morning, when Willie went to school, the man was gone. But when he came home from school with his mother, he was there again. Please don't look at him," his mother whispered with some urgency. During his snack, Willie said, "Why shouldn't I look? What what are you talking about? That man on the street, bagging. I told you, he's sick. It's better to act." As if you never saw him. When people are that way, they don't wish to be looked at. Why not? Mrs. Markin pondered for a little while. People are ashamed of being unhappy. Willie looked thoughtfully at his mother. Are you sure he's unhappy? You don't have to ask if people are unhappy; they tell you all the time. How? The way they look? Is that part of the sickness? Oh, Willie, I don't know. It's just the way they are. Willie contemplated the half-inch slice of cake his mother had just given him. A year ago, his parents seemed to be perfectly happy. For Willie, the world seemed easy, full of light. Then his father lost his job. He tried to get another, but could not. For long hours, he sat in dark rooms. Sometimes he drank. His parents began to argue a lot. And one day. His father was gone. For two weeks, his mother capped to the dark and wept. Willie looked at his mother. "You are unhappy," he said. 
Are you ashamed? Mrs. Markham sighed and closed her eyes. I wish you wouldn't talk like that. Why? It hurts me. But are you ashamed? Willie persisted. He felt it was urgent that he know, so that he could do something. She only shook her head. Willie said, "Do you think that might come back?" She hesitated before saying, y- "Yes, I think so." Willie wondered if that was what she really thought. Do you think Dad is unhappy? Willie asked. Where do you get such questions? They're in my mind. There's much in the mind that need not be paid attention to. Fish who live in caves have no eyes. What are you talking about? My teacher said it's all that darkness. The the fish forget how to see, so they they lose their eyes. <laughs> I doubt she said that. She did. Willie, you have too much imagination. After his mum went to work, Willie gazed down onto the street. The man was there. What he thought of going down, but he knew he was not supposed to leave the building when his mother worked at night. He decided to speak to the man the next day.